two celestial invitational i'm d2 with me is monk we are not the casters on the screen we are english casting this for you guys and uh, piggybacking off of the chinese stream uh thank you thanks again to team celestial for allowing us to uh stream this in english and thanks to temple storm for allowing us to use the channel to get this to you guys we have our final match of the day that's going to be fu oliver versus surrender and basically we have done the math and eloise is through uh fu oliver i don't think he has much of a chance and uh but otherwise, I think if uh, Jay Shaw, or excuse me, if Surrender wins, he's through, and if uh, he loses, I believe Jay Shaw is through. Right. So just uh, Eloise is through, like you mentioned. She's probably going to be through in first place, uh, unless Surrender can get a miraculous 3-0 victory, and uh, it's going to be the battle between Jay Shaw. That's really uh, the battle between Jay Shaw and Surrender for second place. So Fulliver is kind of going to be playing for uh, as the proxy for Jay Shaw right now. Kind of disappointing for Jay Shaw. Um, he was in the last few games, or the, at least in the last match, making two blunders in a row, which cost him the series, which gives Surrender now a chance to go to the finals. Yeah, definitely. I mentioned uh, that I wasn't sure about Fualver, but since the only tie that can happen is going to be at 2-1, he is out. I Yeah, he is out. Uh, looks like we had a, something about Tempo Storm, but <laughs> that's not going to be the case on the screen there. Uh, uh, Surrender is part of, uh, what was it, Coup All-Stars or something like that? But uh, Right. I, I, I'm not sure if he's still with that team, but... Oh, do we have definitely... a leak? Do we have a leak? <laughs> no, uh -oh. I'm just... I, I think uh, the team might have actually disbanded. Right, right, right. So, in any case, uh, <laughs> Surrender's decks are going to be Druid, Hunter, uh, Paladin. Let's look at them right now. All right, so going to be a combo druid with an Ancient of War rather than an Azure Drake for the Hunter. Looks like it's going to be mid uh, hybrid-ish, more mid-rangey uh, with the Leopard Gnomes in there. And uh, as far as the Paladin is concerned, it's going to be a Secret Paladin. Right, just uh, going to take a screenshot of these decks. Oh, oh no! Oh, sorry. Uh, it, was, it was already on Fualver anyway, so... Uh, Yep, sorry about that. We can kind of, I mean, we have a more or less an idea of the decks. In any case, we do have all of our fun team, YOLO Miracle uh, from China as well, as you can see on the top there. Very accomplished player. Um, obviously, all the Chinese players had to qualify for this, but he has many accomplishments uh, before this tournament as well as we get to take a look at his decks. Uh, going to be the Druid on the left, which is... Uh, Again, a normal combo druid, but has living roots. Uh, Harrison Jones, Sylvanas in there, and uh, looking at his warlock, it's going to. Whoa, it's okay. It's going to be a Malagos lock. It looks like, and uh, finally we have for his. Ro oh, I didn't get to see the rogue. Probably going to be oil rogue. Did you get a t uh, chance to take a peek at that? Uh, it's. It looked pretty standard to me. Um, but let's focus back on the Malagos warlock. It's a deck that Purple has Purple drank from uh, BlizzCon and from DreamHack. It used to be from uh, on Team Archon now in Games Origin. It's a deck that he's popularized by winning DreamHack with it. Um, Fulliver's Warlock though is not that a. It's it's kind of strange because it, it puts back in a lot of the situational cards that Purple cut. And by situational, I actually mean cards like Sludge Belcher, which is kind of like a one of, but not necessarily a card that you want all the time. Uh, he also put Dr. Boom in the deck, which is kind of strange for me because it's pretty much the only 7 attack minion in the entire deck, which leaves it vulnerable to BGH. Yeah, that's exactly why I was wondering what the deck was. As I saw, as I was looking through it and I saw the Dr. Boom, I'm like, oh, handlock. And then I saw uh, nothing else of the handlock variety, so I was like, oh, okay, there's a Malagos. But in any case, we are going to be getting a Druid Mirror. Um, a Couple of differences in these decks. Uh, Surrender has the uh, Ancient of War, whereas uh, Fulliver has Living Roots and Harrison Jones. So just based on that, Fulliver, or excuse me, Surrender has the advantage, but obviously has a lot to do with how they start and uh, how they can ramp up. Right, Fulliver also he has a Sylvanas in this deck, which could make a pretty big difference, especially matching up against the Ancient of War. Sylvanas overall is just a hard card for Druid to deal with, uh, because the best way for them to usually deal with it is with a Keeper of the Grove, plus some removal, and or a Swipe, plus a Hero Power, for instance. And even if you do that, so the best case scenario, basically, is you use 6 mana to trade with 6 mana of your opponent. And that's a pretty good trade, I want to say. 
Yeah, definitely. Um, the only real time that you're, uh, you know, feel okay with the Savannah hitting the board is when you're already head on the board and you have the keeper at hand to be able to deal with it. Uh, otherwise, it's really annoying to deal with. You have to spend that four mana to silence it, and then from there on, you can't do much with your turn. Uh, Sunder agonizing over whether or not he wanted to use his Darnassus or the Wild Growth, instead to decides to go with the Wild Growth. Uh, Fualver has a pretty good curve up until this point. Doesn't have a five drop yet, but uh, this is. Definitely the dream, you know, to get the uh, the wild growth into that pile of shatter going first. Yeah, I think one of the big benefits of this kind of team, for, or rather this kind of format, is that we see fewer druid mirrors. But I think uh, Karma just gives us a druid mirror once again. At wow. least it's one of those mirrors where, wow, yeah, exactly. Um, Sorry, top <laughs> Sorry deck for cutting he, you off. <laughs> top deck druid the claw, but it's this is going to be one of those mirrors where it actually. Um, it's going to be pretty even because both players got walled growths. Although that flame tongue totem will be causing quite a bit of trouble. Yeah, I mean, it's not doing anything right now. Uh, it's not providing any damage to face. I think Fualver right now would kind of prefer that it, it be, you know, just a 3 2 on the board uh, because it would be able to start attacking and said he had to kill the Darnassus. Um, but uh, yeah, Surrender has a bit of a decision here. Uh, I'm likely going to see just the Wrath in the Darnassus, though. Uh, right. Obviously, likes to take his time to, uh, be, I mean, before he does anything rash. R right. So the flame tongue totem is actually pretty useful because it activates force of nature as well. Oh, right, For example, right. if uh, if ancient of war comes down the next turn, then you could actually just use force of nature to clear it. Funnily enough. Yeah, this is pretty funny. Um, so, uh, Oliver kind of uh, stuck here because if he plays the Sylvanas on the board, it can get BGH'd and it's kind of worth it to BGH Sylvanas even if uh, one of your uh, BGH or Darnassus gets stolen. Um, in particular, Darnassus, if it gets stolen, it's pretty bad uh, for, for Oliver because you lose a mana, obviously. But, um, yeah, like you say, the uh, the Flame Tongue Totem will be causing problems uh, with, it, with that uh, Force of Nature able to just trade right into it. But, um, yeah, Surrender, you saw him kind of reaching for the coin, knowing he was going to go for either the Ancient of Lore or Ancient of War. Um, and now he has an additional option in that Thorsten. Um, the Ancient of War obviously is something that's tempting to go for, just because it's usually hard for your opponent to deal with, but I think he's realizing what you realized, in that uh, the Force Nature can be a problem here. Right. Um, just the other options besides Ancient of War, they look kind of tempting. The problem with Thorazin is that it actually doesn't reduce too many cards, and it also doesn't reduce any combo pieces, which are usually the best cards to reduce. The Ancient of Lore, it's kind of the weakest option, um, but it leaves you least vulnerable to uh, a variety of things. Right. Um, so it looks like he goes for the he goes for the Emperor Thoris, and I think part of his reasoning here is that he wants to force his opponent to deal with this, and then he can get a free Ancient of Lore on the table. Part of the, some of the time when you try to play Ancient of Lore, uh, if your opponent responds with the, you know, just has a bigger response, then uh, you can be in a bit of trouble, especially if they have the Ancient of War in their uh, their hand and their deck as well. So yeah, so, right. Sorry. So basically, uh, going into Fulver's team to turn seven. He basically can't really Ancient of Lore here, and he can't Doctor Boom, so it makes a lot of sense. What do you think about developing the Living Roots there? I mean, obviously, you, a lot of times you want that extra two damage for the um, <clears throat> utility to be able to, uh, you know, kill something off when you want to, and it's pretty cheap. But at this moment, I think it would be pretty annoying for Surrender to have, you know, extra couple one ones on the board that could trade into his Ancient of Lore. Yeah, I agree. It also denies if if Surrender chooses to swipe, it also denies a lot of cards uh, like Ancient of War and Ancient of Lore in his hand, um, and that would be annoying as well. You might think, "Wow, that's a really good swipe," but really, is it? Because it's only taking away a one mana spell and also taking away the second half of the pilot shredder, so not that effective either. Yeah, definitely. Surrender kind of agonizing here over this turn, wondering whether to go for the Ancient of War or the Ancient of Lore. Decides to go for the bigger body, uh, realizing that even if his opponent uses, you know, that Force Nature, it is, you know, most of his turn used anyway, likely going to be uh, Hero Power after that. So um, he's fine with kind of trading for that Force Nature. It will be less possibility for him to, uh, you know, die in the end. 
uh, to that combo anyway. We could see for Oliver to go for the East of Honest, though. Uh, it would be pretty risky. Uh, surrender kind of... I guess he was just e inhaling. Uh, looked like he was uh, surprised at something. That was pretty funny. But, um... <laughs> Yeah, for Oliver, this is a pretty safe uh, Savannah's turn, I would imagine. Just because, even if he gets BGH, it's really risky for Surrender, because he could get his, uh, his Ancient of War stolen. Yeah, and even if it gets Keepered, I guess, um, S Surrender can't really effectively trade into it very well. Yeah, looks like he's instead going to go for the safe play. Uh, doesn't want to see that Keeper, like you say. And... Um... Yeah, has the opportunity to go for this Living Roots again here, but looks like it's going to be Hero Power. And this has been the one of the most bizarre games. This Flame Tongue Totem has been around for a long time. Yeah, this is the exact kind of game that I think Blizzard really wanted uh, to see happen with the introduction of Pilot Treader. And you know what? Even though the 4-drop slot has been kind of stale, we have been getting exciting games. You can't argue against that. Yeah, definitely. Uh, the Pilot Treader, you know... Obviously, getting that uh, that crazy interaction. I think the uh, Mountain Raptor is pretty cool too with that one drop. Obviously, only in the Druid deck, but um, will be uh, pretty interesting to see that. I think they, I think they're really pushing that random one drop, right? The Hungry Dragon didn't catch on, but uh, now it's going to be the Mountain Raptor in a lot of decks. Yeah, so kind of a strange turn here. Uh, Fulver, because he realized he threw away one part of the combo, he might as well throw away the other part. Ooh, yeah, this is pretty painful. Um, he's not going to be able to play Sylvanas this turn, which means he's basically just clearing... I mean, he's using 5 mana to clear... Um, essentially... I mean... It's like it's kind of like a five drop, but you know, for two extra mana you get two cards, so it's not the best situation for him. And obviously... Uh, surrender having so many more cards, just so much more, uh, so many more options to him available right now. Fulver is definitely on the back foot. Yeah, Fulver is thinking, where did it all go wrong here? Yeah, even with a swipe here to clear off this shade, it just seems like Fulver can't really catch a break. Yeah, what do you think about this play using the swipe just to clear off a shade? I guess it's pretty useful. I mean, you're gonna use swipe. Uh, in the future anyway. I mean, Swipe is something you you would use to clear off like a 4-4 shade anyway, so I guess it makes sense. Um, doesn't have the ability to do anything after that other than Wild Growth, but... Uh, oh, interesting. He's just going to go for the Ancient Allure. Yeah, this is okay as well. I wouldn't have minded Swipe at all, to be honest, because it looks like your opponent... His hand is very clunky, and if you just get rid of, like, if you just play kind of the control game and, and just get rid of all his threats one by one with your superior hand, then it's a way to victory. But this also puts pressure on the opponent, which is a, a solid option as well. Yeah, I think he changed his mind in, middle, in the middle of his play. He was like, okay, I can play this Azurgic, and then I can play something else. And then he was like, ah, oh, maybe not. So eventually went with the uh, Ancient of Lore, especially after yeah. he drew that Innervate. Yeah. But uh, in any case, Fulver, like we said, uh, on the back foot, not much to do here. Could play the Sylvanas, but obviously he's super dead to combo if that's in uh, Surrender's hand. But uh, I think you can't really be afraid of that right now. Right, you just have to play the hand that you're given, basically. And if the opponent doesn't have combo, then it's actually... Probably your best bet to get back into the game, to be honest, is kind of Sylvanas. Oh, instead, he goes for a defensive play. I yeah. mean, it does it does keep him alive, but I'm not sure if like this is a pact to victory. Yeah, I mean, he has no combo pieces in hand. Um, he is slightly winning the board, but you know, with 10 mana to use, obviously Surrender is not going to be behind on board for long. Uh, does, with that Force Nature pickup, have 20 damage uh, to fall over his face, potentially? But uh, what do you think his play is right here? Could go just for Wild Ghost to cycle through and then play the Shade and the Drew of the Claw just to have a bigger board to this opponent. Maybe uh, hit the face with the uh, Azure Drake. Yeah, is there... In any world, does... Does Fulliver... Uh, is, is he able to, like, lethal his opponent? I don't think so. Because he only has three cards. He'll only have three cards in hand next turn. And he can't do like a double combo turn, especially because Fulliver's used one um, one combo. Wow. That is really turn. bad. 
Okay, so Surrender kind of goes for a half and half play, right? Uh, he gets his opponent down to 14, which is obviously in combo range. Uh, he gets a pretty intimidating board. Uh, the worst thing that could have come out of that would be like something like Millhouse, which doesn't really matter. I guess the uh, the Doomsayer would be pretty annoying, but he could have killed that as well. So in between play, clears a lot of his opponent's board, not in danger of dying whatsoever. Uh, there's not four cards for a double combo, and uh, looking really, really good for Surrender right now. Yeah, I don't really see a way for him to get out of this. Um, he can play the Ancient of Lore, draw into Innervate and perhaps Drew the Claw, but even that would be way not enough to deal with this board. Yep, so it looks like, uh, I mean, Surrender obviously had, oh, this is interesting, um, Surrender had uh, a much more, or a much better deck uh, prepared for this particular mirror matchup. Obviously, the Ancient of War doing a lot better than something like the Harrison Jones. Also, the Living Wood stuck in Fuelver's hand for a long, long time. So, in the end, Surrender's uh, deck preparation will help him out here and uh, put him to a 1 0 lead. And this is pretty huge for both him and Jay Shaw, uh, just, to, just to remind everyone that the winner of this, excuse me, uh, if Surrender wins, he moves on to the final eight, and if he loses, then Jay Shaw moves to the final eight. Doesn't matter what the score is, and so yeah, he's playing for himself while versus playing for his countrymen. Really important match here, and uh, good for F Surrender to get to that one zero lead. Yeah, I just have to question the decision from Fulliver to kind of keep that living roots in his hand the entire game. You saw in the end, it really didn't do anything, whereas uh, sometime in the middle of that game, he could have baited out a swipe and really made Surrender's terms quite awkward. Yeah, definitely. We both talked about how that could have been an option for him. Uh, didn't go for it in the end. Looks like Fulver has queued up his rogue uh, to potentially go against um, the Paladin of Surrender, and he's gotten that matchup that he wanted. And looking really good for Fulver. Look at that hand. That's exactly what you want as a rogue against a Paladin. Right. Uh, could, could this hand be any better? Uh, maybe the Deadly Poison could be a preparation, I guess? Yeah, I don't but, know. It's but, it's very it's it's this is close to the best hand, pretty much. Yeah, if you have preparation there, you're kind of relying on future draws. Whereas this deadly poison, well, there's a prep. Oh, okay. <laughs> the deadly poison is guaranteed going to be able to do some work. Uh, but yeah, this is kind of insane. Interesting to see if he goes for uh hit with a dagger backstab or backstab coin si. Um, it's kind of risky, especially if that ends up being. Oh, okay, gonna, just gonna go for that play. Looks like, okay, this kind of makes sense. What he can do by going for this play is um, he can clear it almost guaranteed next turn, even if it is redemption. So go for backstab and then re attack it again with your face and then use the SI. If it's Avenge, he can clear the 4 3 as well. Uh, Re Avenge Redemption would be really annoying though. Yeah, you mean the, the 5 4, right? Oh, uh, I mean, if he, if he backstabs the. Oh yeah. Well, he can do this. Yeah. So this is this is better. Yeah, this is better because it leaves a one one if it is a defense redemption. And it's not. Oh. Do you did you uh, catch what secret that was? Uh, it's competitive spirit. Oh, okay. Okay. Right. Um. Oh yeah, we see that on the left side, I believe. Anyway, uh, in any case, Fulver is going to take control of this board with his uh SI or the backstab and the SI. Uh, unfortunately for him, he doesn't have too much. Uh, going for him right now. He kind of wishes that his opponent had only muster, or not, yeah, only muster for battle, so he could have a use for his fan. But yeah, in the meantime, really nothing for him to do. Sender so gonna not play the shutter. Just gonna kill off this uh, SI. Doesn't want the rogue to have anything on the board. Yeah, one of the best cards that Secret Paladin can have against uh, all rogue because it just deals with every minion, uh, except f with the possible exception of Lotheb and perhaps Doctor Boom. So Surrender is just basically setting up to say, um, yeah, you're not going to be able to play anything the next turn. I guess, although I guess uh, the Violet Teacher could be an option. Yeah, the Violet Teacher would be pretty annoying for Surrender here. Unfortunately, for Oliver had the perfect starting hand, but right now it's kind of uh, running dead for him. This can happen to the Oil Row, can run a little bit dead in the situations. Um, you just kind of hope that you, you know, continue to draw into those minions, but not going to be the case here. Uh, with the second Phantom Knives, he might use the first, uh, since he doesn't need that, obviously, to... Uh, or he, he has the second one to deal with Muster for Battle, potentially. Um, Sap is also an option on this, though we see the Tyrion hand, which could be trouble later. Yeah, we also see the Dr. Boom in hand, which means that Sap... Even if he doesn't Sap this minion, he could be baited into Sapping Dr. Boom. 
So even though Fulover had an amazing opening hand, it's just that he had too many answers for all of Surrender's possible openings, and that actually made his mid-game hand a little weaker. Yeah, I mean, as, it doesn't matter how good your opening is. If you skip two turns in a row, you're not going to be looking too good, right? So, yeah, that's going to be the case here. Surrender's just going to play that back to Sludge Belcher, realizing that his opponent has nothing to deal with it. Though he does have a coin, Dr. Boom, which is uh, pretty nice. For Oliver, kind of sad that he wasn't able to have that low the last turn, but uh, still going to be pretty annoying for Surrender to deal with this. Yeah, definitely not very bad to have yet another, have it like a Dr. Boom on the board. Although Surrender can counter with his own Dr. Boom, which might be more threatening than Fulliver's Dr. Ooh. Boom. Oh. Yeah, kind of a big decision here, though. How many secrets will it pull? What have we seen so far? We've seen Competitive Spirit, we've seen Redemption, and uh, what is the... Oh, we have a Noble Sacrifice up right now. So obviously one pull the Noble Sacrifice. Likely pull, I want to say, three secrets? Yeah, that sounds about right. It's... It's, you know you know when Mysterious Challenger is a good card when you'd rather play it than Dr. Boom on turn 7. <laughs> right, that's why they call it Dr. 6, right? But, right. Uh, um, yeah, it would have been really cool, really good for Surrender last turn to play the um, Mysterious Challenger. Obviously, the Sludge Welter wasn't too bad for him either, but looks like it's going to be Dr. Boom first. Just going to risk uh, drawing those secrets, potentially. Yeah, I think a part of it is that he already has the Noble Sacrifice in play. And Noble Sacrifice is certainly one of those secrets you run two of in your deck. So he doesn't want a repeat of the... Or he basically wants more value out of this Mysterious Challenger. Yeah. Could be could be pretty greedy, but might work out for him in the end. Uh, for Oliver... <laughs> goes for uh, the Fan and Knives. Doesn't really provide any good boom mods either way. But uh, obviously for Oliver's wanted to needed that a bit more. I believe he has BGH in his Rogue, right? Usually they run it these days. Yeah, he definitely, he does have one BGH in the room. So, Fulver can clear this, but it would be... It would hurt. It would involve Prep Fan Tinkers, because he can't get past the 1-1 uh, the one -one here. Oh, never mind, just, uh, oh, never mind. just, just Fan, I'm sorry, uh, my mistake. So, yeah, he, he's going to attack here, and it's going to be Noble Sacrifice, and then he's going to have to use his face, but that means he needs uh, to apply the extra Deadly Poison, which is really painful. Oh, never mind. Just oh, or, kidding. Or not. Just kidding. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I forgot about Sur Boombots. My bad. Sur Surrender's face was like, yeah, I kind of expected that to happen. Oh, he wasn't really goodness. even that mad about it. Even picks up the event, which is not what you want to see right now. Uh, so do you brave the sap and play the Tyrion here? Um, how much do you think that Fu Oliver just didn't want to sap the Dr. Boom, and but has it in hand? Um, I, I, think, I think you just... You guess that he doesn't have the sap because they already used one anyway. And if he had the sap for Dr. Boom, probably he would have played it, I think. Right, right. Um, yeah, so, I mean, that's all something that Surrender has to consider right now. Uh, did Fu Oliver just not play the sap? Does he have it in hand? What are the odds he has it in hand? Maybe he top decks it. So, all things that he has to consider. Because if you get this Tyrion sapped, you could just lose the game right then and there. I mean, not, not, le not to lethal but to uh, just, that's too much of a tempo swing. Right, whereas Mysterious Challenger is certainly the, um, the better option if you, it's the less, it's, it's the less risky option, but then again, I think Mysterious Challenger is weaker to BGH. Now, uh, you probably know that he has, the Rogue has two saps in his deck, but you don't know whether he has a BGH. So with either of these options, it kind of feels like you're, you're risking uh, against something. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so this 50-50 will be absolutely huge because if this hits the 1-1, uh, then Fulver can just uh, Drake and Flurry and still have two Tinkers left. Um, so yeah, this 50-50 might decide the game. But if even if it hits the, the Mysterious Challenger, there's always an option to, um, I guess not play the Azure Drake and go for the Blade Flurry with, uh, in combination with the Tinker Sharp Sword all instead. Mm -hmm. That does kind of hurt, though, because it's pretty much a, a big tempo loss. Yeah. I mean, he, he could go for it anyway because he has that prep, right? Just right. Just use it with the, uh, the Azure Drake. So I imagine it's going to be either just Flurry or Prep Tinker's Flurry. So, um, huh, just going to do it regardless. Interesting. 
Just wants to get as much damage as possible. I guess that kind of makes sense, right? Just get the maximum damage. Right. And it's going to be... A, so, I guess I maybe played that up a bit too much. Uh, this is going to be... I mean, Fowler went for the same play regardless, and it's going to be a ton of damage and a lot of pressure on Surrender here. Yeah, on the other side of things, though, that Tyrion is going to do quite a bit of work. In order for uh, Fulliver to clear this theoretical Tyrion, he needs to kind of smack it in his face with his dagger, right? And that just means you go down to 13, which over the course of three turns uh, is lethal. I'm sorry, uh, yeah, it's 13. <laughs> so, yeah, th they're showing us, yeah, he basically needs exactly sap right now, and unfortunately, Vi Teacher is not sap. So that was an event, right? It's not redemption or uh, noble sacrifice. I think there's no noble sacrifices left. Right, and that that's basically avenge. Oh, we already saw avenge too as well, right? From before. So this is the right. last avenge. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So I'm getting confused. Anyway. Um, so yes, obviously sap would have been a huge card here that would have been lethal. Yeah. So um, pretty good uh, for Surrender's sake that Fualiver wasn't able to draw that. Uh, I want to draw attention to something. Surrender had basically Doctor 6, Doctor 7, Doctor 8, and he's played all of them now, and Fualiver is in, uh, I mean, it's kind of even this game, right? So that just kind of shows how well the Rogue is able to deal with all the threats from uh, the Paladin, even without having drawn Big Game Hunter. But, um, right. We, we do have to consider that uh, Fualiver's start was basically the best it could have been. Uh, it's just at different points of the game, different players got lucky with their, uh, what they drew. Fulliver definitely dominated early game. Surrender probably had a better mid game, and he's also had kind of a better late game as well. Wow, Fulliver is giving his opponent a free kill on his one of his minions by not pinging off the Divine Shield. Uh, obviously worried about his health total, but this is going to lose him the board here. Uh, I don't know about that decision. What, what do you think? I think he just really didn't want to take uh, six damage to the face and give his opponent an Ashbringer, which kind of makes sense. He probably wouldn't have been able to to heal past that, honestly. So I don't mind it at all. It's, he just really hoped that Surrender didn't draw into another big threat like the second Mysterious Challenger. And I'd be really impressed if Fulliver can come back into this game. Usually when Paladins draw both Mysterious Challengers, a Tyrion and a Dr. Boom, that's pretty much game over, right? Yeah, um, that's why I was kind of marveling at Fualver's ability to kind of stay in the game. Right now, it looks pretty dire. Uh, he can use his play his whole hand uh, while you know daggering up as well. Um, kind of interesting decision because he, I imagine, he wants to backstab and throw the shredder in, so he can't guarantee the Tinkers will go on something good. Uh, like the Lothab, he probably wants it on the Lothab so he can trade with whatever it gets buffed here. But yeah, it's going to be a kind of a difficult decision, um, regardless. So yeah, okay. It looks like it's gonna it goes on to the mysterious challenger, and uh, the buff goes on to the spawned one one. A lot of pressure on the surrender, but uh, he needs one damage, but he can't use the one damage from the muster for battle. This is actually kind of crazy. Wow. Okay, that's not enough. So is there any way for him to clear off enough of this board so it's not lethal? The real problem is that there's two five health minions on the board. I don't really see a way for him to get out of this. He gets a taunt. He. Oh yeah, this is impossible. I think it's impossible, right? Because he needs a taunt. Um, but he can't clear enough of the board so that the uh, damage doesn't get through from the face. So yeah, that's gonna be it. Surrender one damage off lethal, unable to take it, and Fowler is gonna tie up this series one game to one. Man, that's got to be frustrating when you've drawn so well in the late game as Secret Paladin, and you're just off by one damage. Now I know how Forsen feels. <laughs> I'm sure we've all had been one damage off lethal at one point or another. <laughs> Obviously, being one damage off lethal is usually uh, manufactured by the opponent. You know, they, they're playing uh, within their limits to of the uh, potential lethals from their opponent. But in that case, it was simply, you know, just good fortune. Uh, to be able to escape lethal right there. In the case, it's going to be the Paladin from Surrender going against the Druid for Fulver. This is a favored matchup for the Paladin, so uh, Surrender will be uh, pleased about this situation despite the kind of painful loss last game. Yeah, I will say that there are some tech choices in the Druid, though, that kind of help out uh, Fulver. He has Living Roots, which is pretty good against Secret Paladin. He also has 
the Harrison Jones, which is a good pickup as well. Unfortunately, though, I believe he only runs one Darnassus Aspirin, which is a huge, uh, usually a really huge play for the Druid because typically on turn two, Paladins don't have a way to deal with their Nasus Aspirin. Ooh, oh. but we see the Nasus come into the hand, speaking of which. Um, Fallover actually had a turn three play, uh, regardless of whether the Darnassus is there or not, but Surrender might have to, you know, jump through hoops to be able to kill that if he's too afraid of it. Yeah, fortunately for Surrender, though, he has one of the best starts you could have with double Secret Keeper. They're the only like two, they're the only two one drop that you play in this deck. Sometimes Zombie Chow, very rarely Argent Squire, but this is kind of if you don't have Shielded Mini Bot, this is kind of like the perfect curve. Yeah, but what do you go for here? Do you go for the Coin Juggler into uh, Double Secret Keeper next turn? He kind of wishes he had an extra Secret in hand, strange as it sounds, because he wants to buff those uh, Secret Keepers. Doesn't really want to go for um, one Secret Keeper because it could be weak against Darnassus potentially. So, yeah, it looks like he's going to use his coin regardless just to put as much power as he can on the board, but uh, pretty tough decision here. Yeah, you definitely have to be thinking about Darnassus here, so... Um, no matter what, basically, you need to have the you need to use your coin, whether it to be use the knife juggler to set up for um, killing the Darnassus or playing double secret keeper. Right. Um, so nothing with nothing to do here for Fualver. I mean, he's not going to innervate Savage Roar, so going to be the Darnassus coming out. And for Surrender, uh, depending on his top deck, he might go for uh, double secret keeper. Or he might go for Secret Keeper Secret, but it looks like it's going to be Double Secret Keeper. Wants these to hit face, I believe. Um, well, I guess he could go face here. Since it hit both. I mean, now the Darnassus doesn't have a good trade, so... Yeah, and we can see from Fulliver's hand that he can't actually, he can't actually use the, the mana that the Darnassus Aspirin gives very, very easily. Yeah, ends up um, just trading in, which is um, unfortunate for Surrender. It's just really painful if uh, Fualiver does have exactly, you know, the um, uh, Shredder there and curves perfectly from there on. But, um, yeah, Fualiver just goes for the charge, realizes that those guys can uh, grow pretty big. Um, and uh, just going to be the... <laughs> Oh my goodness, going to be the uh, muster for battle for Surrender, but Fualiver has a swipe in hand. This feels really bad. I mean, Fulliver is going to swipe the board, and if Surrender doesn't do any kind of trades here, then he's going to feel so bad, especially with Keeper of Ultimon as his only card left that he can actually play effectively on turn 4, and he doesn't have anything to buff on turn 4, so if Surrender just goes for face, he's basically going all in here. Oh, wow. Makes the read that his opponent could have swipe here. <laughs> and, I mean, it's going to force, you know, it's going to cost him 12 damage, but, well, actually, kind of 16 if you think about it because of the swipe. But, I mean, it's not going to get him completely crushed on the board, so, wow, this is kind of crazy here from Surrender. Honestly, Fulliver can consider not swiping here and saving it for a rainy day. And just going for the wild growth and hero power seems all right. And basically, it's you're asking if uh, you'd rather have your opponent take four damage to the face here, or if you'd rather keep the swipe. And I yeah. think keeping the swipe is all right. But doing so forces your opponent to take 16 damage overall, which is pretty good. Um, and he's obviously he's already taking the four, so from here on out, that would I mean the swipe could always go four to the face, so that's kind of irrelevant, I suppose. But um, yeah, it's gonna, there's going to be the 4 damage from this, and he won't be able to trade a 1-1 one, one into it as well. So it's going to be potentially an extra 8 damage to face, and he's and uh, now Surrender's going to be perpetually in uh, combo range. Right, not only that, but as we can tell, if Fulliver went for the play that didn't involve Swipe, then Keeper of Uldegon would have gotten pretty good value. So it turned out that just because of the cards that Surrender did have, this probably ended up better. Yeah, pretty sad play for Surrender, though, in the end, uh, because he has to play Redemption on a 1-1, one -one, which doesn't feel good at any time. And uh, Oh, wow. yeah. Harrison Jones could be pretty big. Harrison Jones would have been better this turn instead of Ezra Drake, but I think he's pretty happy regardless. Um, Surrender, 
Gonna go ahead and trade the 1-1 one, one in to make sure that the trade with the uh, Sludge Vulture isn't too good. Doesn't want any uh, Wrath for 1s or something like that to you know, cause him any problems. But uh, this is getting you know kind of dicey for a surrender. Doesn't really have too many options. And didn't swing, which means it could be two cards coming off this uh, Harrison Jones. That's probably going to be the play, even though it leaves his Zergic vulnerable, just because everything else isn't that great anyway. But uh, yeah, basically, Keeper of the Harrison Jones coming onto the board, <laughs> drawing two cards here. Not Man. this situation. But that is a mysterious challenge right at the top, okay. so uh, whenever you're feeling bad, Ms. Dr. Six is here to make you feel better. Right, and he's also cleared the board pretty easily as well. What I guess Fulliver does have going for him is that he does have a BGH in his hand. So if Fulliver crosses his fingers and uh, prays to Arden Jesus, maybe the Avenge will land on the Mysterious Challenger and he'll get a pretty easy kill from it. Yeah, it would be that 50-50. Um, Otherwise, it seems like uh, there's not really any good options at all. Playing Dr. Boom into a possible I repentance. Mean, yeah, but I mean... Uh, it's still, unless there's some sort of Consecrate, it still kind of demands, you know, that your opponent uh, trade into it, which is kind of nice. Ooh, so that's really good for a Surrender, obviously. Um, going to be hard to get rid of the, through that Sludge Belcher. So that was a pretty big 50-50, and yeah, Dr. Boom could be the play here just to get as much stuff on the board. I mean, there's not much else to do if you don't play Dr. Boom. Um, and, I mean, Surrender has to trade into this, to be fair. Because he doesn't want to die. Huh, there's actually no repentance uh, in this deck list. Oh, right, right. Yeah, so even better for uh, for Oliver's sake. Yeah, but then again, there's so many good trades on the board right now. Basically, uh, Surrender can trade up on most of the minions on the board. Yeah, the scary thing, though, is if you trade up with the uh, Sludge Belcher, then you could be in trouble. Instead, goes for the old one, which makes sense. And... Uh... Yeah, it looks like he's he's out of time. If he starts trading right here, he's never going to have time to be able to kill his opponent. So, um, Oh, okay. He's actually thinking about whether he wants to trade the 7-7 seven, seven to the 3-3. Three, three. Uh, yeah, it definitely is vulnerable to that BGH potentially, so I uh, suppose that makes sense. But, uh, I mean, losing 7 damage to the face is pretty painful. Yeah, but if he doesn't trade here, then there's... Fulliver can actually deal with the board pretty easily uh, just by... Just by trading in his Dr. Boom as well. Trading in into Dr. Boom also allows your Sludge Belcher to survive much more easily. Yeah. Um, one consideration for Surrender here was that even if his opponent does play the BGH, it does uh, require him to use three of his eight mana. Uh, so it makes it harder to deal with the rest of the board. And we see that the uh, the Mysterious Challenger is, you know, redempted or redeemed right back onto the field. So. Um, that's one consideration. Uh, I mean, now the six one is pretty threatening to the life level for Oliver, so uh, definitely going to be sorry? going to be forced to have to use Savage Roar here as well mm -hmm. because of the redemption. Yeah, and uh, these boom bots are pretty huge. Uh, okay, never mind. He's going to go with this just to clear with his base. But um, yeah, this game is all of a sudden really close. Uh, Surrender really all in right here. Uh, that boom bot was really good for him, though. And, uh, well, maybe not so close, actually, now that I think about it. Fallover looks he's like he's in a pretty dominating position. Yeah, basically, Surrender will have to rely on top decks right now. What can he really get at this point? Well, Coghammer does allow him to kind of uh, stay alive for a bit. Um, he can get this taunt up and then play the Noble Sacrifice plus a Hero Power. And, you know, by attacking face earlier, he did get his opponent pretty low. So, um, if you can just top deck something like a Tyrion, um, you know, or maybe his own Dr. Boom, which I don't think we've seen yet. Um, no, we haven't. Getting confused but... with the last game, yeah. So. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Dr. Boom would actually be pretty huge because we know that there's not yet the combo for Fulliver, and there's no BGH left in Fulliver's deck. He, uh, like many other druids, only runs one. Right. Uh, he did thin out his deck with the Mysterious Challenger, though, so that will help him. Though, picking up the Avenge here after having played the uh, Mysterious Challenger earlier is pretty painful. It looks like we have a bit of a lag issue right here. That's unfortunate. Um, okay. Don't want to deal with this any longer, so just going to have to re refresh the stream, guys. Sorry about that. 
Hopefully it doesn't skip up too far. Yeah, uh, unless we see like an amazing top deck, this game seems pretty locked up here. All right, so um, looks like uh, through lagging quite a bit over the course of the game, um, the couple of turns have passed, and Fualiver, or sorry, not uh, basically a half a turn has passed, and so Fualiver has already played Force of Nature, and is starting to clear this board. I do like his play, by the way, earlier to uh, not go for healing. And instead going for the card draw, because he knew that he just having more options will probably be better uh, to save him in the end, rather than going uh, for the healing right away. Oh yeah, in this kind of position, you almost never want to heal, especially because you know the Shaman typically doesn't have a lot of bursts. And also you know that there's the Ancient of Lore in your, in your hand, your second Ancient of Lore, rather, that, so you can heal whenever you want. Uh, so Fallover finds lethal, and Surrender is right now on the back foot. He's playing for... Um, the chance to go into the quarterfinals, into the round of eight, um, the playoff bracket, basically. Whereas, again, Fallover is just playing for his countrymen, probably someone he doesn't know as well. Yeah, I mean, for all, people kind of know each other on each other's teams. Uh, Fallover, obviously, on Yellow Miracle, whereas Jaysha is on Celestial. Um, probably have heard of each other. Uh, well, I, I assume that Fallover has heard of Jaysha. Jaysha obviously know who's who uh, Fallover is, but um, yeah, I mean, you might as well play it out. Even if you're not playing for him, uh, you're playing for pride as well. You don't want to be showing bad results at a tournament for you know your sake in the future. In any case, it is going to be the Malagos luck against the uh, Secret Paladin, which surprisingly enough hasn't picked up a win yet. Right. So um, the, the good thing for Surrender about this matchup is. Malagos Warlock, its worst matchup is pro honestly probably Secret Paladin. Um, Purple was Purple Drank was quoted as saying uh, after he won Dreamhack that basically his strategy was that Malagos Warlock, he thought it was the best deck in the game, and it beat everything except Secret Paladin. So he brought Patron Warrior in his lineup as well just to beat Secret Paladin so that Malagos Warlock could clean up everything else. Uh, judging from that experience, I think Fallover is going to have a really hard time because oftentimes when you're playing Malagos Warlock against Secret Paladin, it kind of feels like you're paying, playing Handlock, but just without the Molten Giants. Right, right, right. Um, and obviously it's going to be you know a combo deck, so it's hard to get those pieces together, and you might fall behind in the tempo going against a Secret Paladin. Um, Surrender, by the, though, has a pretty clunky hand. Um, not going to be able to be grabbing any sort of tempo anytime soon unless he basically top decks for the next three turns. Oh, wow. I was almost certain that a Dark Bomb was coming down now, but I think uh, Fulliver is thinking he wants to be able to activate Mortal Coil in the next turn. Unfortunately, though, that gives the Secret Paladin more time to build up that Secret Keeper. And now this uh, Secret Keeper is kind of out of range of uh, the Mortal Coil alone. He needs to be, he needs, probably is going to have to expend either his Dark Bomb or risk a Noble Sacrifice by using his Abusive Sergeant. Yeah, he could potentially use Dark Bomb plus Mortal Coil, but then he's risking the Avenge, which would be a problem. Uh, if he attacks him with his Dark Peddler first, then that could proc Avenge and make the uh, the Secret Keeper even bigger than that, turning into a 6-6. Six, six. So overall, kind of a tough decision by Fualiver. Doesn't know what any yeah. of those Secrets are quite yet, other than uh, Repentance and Competitive Spirit. Uh, there is an option where you Dark Bomb and Mortal Coil the Secret Keeper, and then Abusive Sarge and the Dark Peddler in order to deal with a possible Avenge. But the problem with that play, again, is that it doesn't really play around Noble Sacrifice plus Avenge. So anything you really do here is going to have probably negative consequences somewhere down the line. Yeah, so um, Fallover is kind of greed by playing the Dark Peddler and not going with the Dark Bomb earlier. It looks like it's not going to pay off. Obviously, you can kind of see what he's thinking, right? Uh, doc, if you use the Dark Bomb now, you don't have it later for something like a Night Juggler, which is obviously very um, threatening as well. But... Um, yeah, it looks like he's finally going to start dealing with this board. Dark Bomb Mortal Coil does come down. We're going to see what these secrets are. Uh, looks like it's going to be Avenge. One of them was played so fast that we didn't get to see. But uh, yeah, going to be Avenge and Redemption. So it's going to be able to kill off this second half of the Secret Keeper, which is obviously good for Fallover. Yeah, I think overall that worked out pretty well, especially since there's no Mustard for Battle in Surrender's hand. 
Yep, Surrender has very good options from 5 through 7, but uh, looks, gonna be, looks like it's going to be a turn 4 hero power pass, which is pretty painful. And, um, yeah, Fu Oliver going to be able to clear off this 4-3, which is good for him. The 4-8 Twilight Drake, not going to be too good uh, for Surrender's sake. And, um, yeah, what do you go for here? Do you go for the Lothab? The Sludge Belcher. I, um, either, there's barrets for either end. I guess the, the Sludge Belcher, what it does here is even if there's a, a, a Defender of Argus to clear, because obviously Defender of Argus clears either the Lothab or the uh, Sludge Belcher, but um, it leaves behind a 1-2 that can be uh, buffed by the Mysterious Challenger, and it reduces the chance for a BGH in the future turns. Right, exactly. Mysterious Challenger is a lot weaker when it's its own minion. It needs some support. It, it actually, um, even though it's like kind of a guy who wants to be alone, it actually does want some friends. <laughs> who am I? All yeah. of your business. Be my friend, please. Yeah, exactly. That's how it actually works out in practice in this game. All right, in any case, uh, going to be kind of a tough decision for Fualiver. Doesn't I mean, he wants to play on Curve, but now he doesn't have anything to activate that uh, Twilight Guardian, uh, which can be an issue in the future. So, uh, Sunder, so pretty easy turn right here. I don't think he's going to play that Blessing of Kings. Probably going to be that Mysterious Challenger to both thin out his deck and put a big threat on the board. However, there's a BGH picked up by Fualiver, so that could be a big deal. Yeah, Fualiver in general, though, he hasn't been very lucky with the random Avengers. Uh, spawning on Mysterious Challenger, so I'm pretty sure that's going to happen this game, or at least the opportunity for it to spawn on Mysterious Challenger uh, is going to happen this game. We're going to see if Fulver is lucky or not, yet again. Just going for the face, and you know, all that damage is going to stick. Uh, there is a heal bot in Fulver's hand, but how much is that really going to matter? It's still a lot of damage. Yeah, it could matter oh. in the... Okay, wow. That's in, that is wait, wait, wait. Wait. You, do you really want that to get... Uh, respawned? Oh, I guess you know what? There's uh, He's already seen Redemption. Wow. So because the Sludge Belcher... Was no, he, no. There's two Redemptions in this deck. Okay. So because the Sludge Belcher was played before the Mysterious Challenger, it didn't guaranteed go off on the Mysterious Challenger, and therefore Fallover just kind of screwed himself over with that play. Yeah, exactly. Oh my god, <laughs> wow. That is absolutely disastrous. So we got a 4 for swat slime and a, a, a redeemed Sludge Belcher. B BGH looks pretty sad in the hand right now. Um... Right, this is not looking very good. Even attacks with the wrong creature. I mean, wouldn't you attack with the uh, Azure Drake? Because now you have to throw it away. Oh no, this is not looking too good for Oliver. Kind of crumbling here. Doesn't even tap. Yeah. Oh, it, no. If you just look at what was green after he played the Dark Peddler and the Mortal Quill, I think you could definitely see that he thought that the Mystery Challenger would definitely get buffed. And he played that turn out so quickly as well. Yeah, I mean, that's you have to know the sequencing. It's, I mean, sometimes it looks like you know it's guaranteed that's going to be going onto the Shredder or the Mysterious Challenger, but obviously the play order matters there, uh, even with Death Rattles. So, looks like Surrender is going to be preventing his opponent from playing any um, any spells here instead of going for the Doctor Room of his own. Um, Looks like he's going to be a bit punished by it, though, because, I mean, he doesn't know that his opponent, uh, if his opponent has a BGH or not. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm actually a bit confused about that. What spells is he really looking to prevent from his opponent? I mean, does he know if this is Malagol Silock yet, or it could still be, um, it could still be Reno Lock, potentially? Oh, yeah, maybe, like, a Power Overwhelming plus the Shadow Flame would have been pretty yeah. amazing here. But now he's going to get the news. Yeah, he's only seen cards like Twilight Drake and... Um, what else has he seen? Adra no, he knows it's, uh, it should be Malagos Warlock because of the Azure Drake played earlier on. Yeah, but you never know. Sometimes sometimes, sometimes people might want to play like a, a Dragon, you know, Reno Lock, especially because all the disparate parts with the uh, <clears throat> Dark Peddler and such. But um, 
Yeah, gonna make himself a bit vulnerable to Hellfire here by trading. Could have gone for the 4 5 damage to the face as we see the deck second uh, BG. It's not too surprising in this Malagos lock. But um, double Hellfire will clear the board, though. There is a dark, there is a Dr. Boom on the back end of that. Yeah, and it's not the Dr. Boom that's gonna be threatening because of the second BGH, but it's, it's gonna be the Boom Bots. Mm. Boom Bots might just end the game, honestly. Oh, actually, you know what, Doctor? Or um... wow, that is a huge draw. Actually, that knife juggler is basically three damage. He's just—he basically just dark bomb the face here. Uh, did right. surrender, and uh, I mean the bigger thing, right, is that you had to play big game hunter to deal with this, and that leaves you only six mana to do anything else. So you have to heal bot. Yeah, you have to heal. You otherwise, I think uh, the blackwing technician would have been pretty good. But this leaves up the knife juggler still on the board, so that's a guaranteed six damage. He needs five more, which is actually kind mm -hmm. of hard. Keeper Voldemon provides two more damage, uh, and potentially you know more with the knives as well. I'm going to be looking to get uh, a knife on one of these minions, I think, just because of the because you can your, use your either your, sorry you can use either your boombot or your face. Um, yeah, it clears out the oh. big game hunter. And Perfect. a lot of pressure. And a lot of pressure, especially because because both Hellfires have been used, there's really no more AoE in this deck. Yeah, absolutely. So Fallover is, um, he can't clear, he can't save himself right now with this curtain hand, so he has to tap. But yeah, but what can he even tap into? The problem, again, here is you have, you, most of your minions are kind of fair. I mean, the Twilight Guardians and the... Um, the Blackwing Corruptors are slightly above curve, but really nothing that he can really do here. Not Nothing like Reno Jackson, for example, that can heal him back to full health. And Surrender is going to give up this fourth game, which means it's going to go down to the wire. No, oh, Surrender's going to take the fourth game. Yeah, Surrender's going to take the fourth game, which is, it's going to go down to the wire. Surrender's fate is in his own hands. He needs to win with his final deck. Yeah, this entire group, all six games, is coming down to this last game. The fate of Jay Shaw and Surrender uh, relies on this game. Surrender, if he wins, will go on to the final eight. If he loses, then Jay Shaw will go to the final eight. Eloise is already in. Fualver is already out. And it'll come down to this uh, mostly mid-range hunter, though we do see the Leopard Gnomes in it. Right. I think overall, this is probably going to be a good matchup for Surrender, actually. Uh, again, it's kind of like the the Malagos Warlock is playing like a handlock style, except just without the Molten Giants, without the Sun Fury Protectors. And that's really the, the key cards that handlock uses to get back into the game as Hunter, against Hunter. Yeah, Fallover is going to be relying on uh, kind of his, uh, basically the tempo from his uh, cards that affect the board really well, like those Twilight Guardians, to get in the way, like uh, these Dark Peddlers to provide a body and be a sort of utility, and th those Blackwing Corruptors to clear the board while being able to draw into, into those uh, heal bots to heal himself back up. Uh, that said, you know, Surrender does have those high mains in the deck, so it could be uh, really problematic for Fallover to deal with that. Yeah, the, I guess the equivalent play of Molten Giants plus Sun Fury Protector in the Malagos Warlock is Brand Bronzebeard, into uh, double into heal bot, which heals for 16. But the problem with that is, again, healing doesn't matter as much when you're against mid range hunter because they can put really sticky minions on the field that you can't deal with. So even though you heal for 16, there just might be, for example, 16 more damage coming uh, at you the very next turn. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Full Oliver with an interesting decision there with the Peddler. Goes with the uh, Stone Tux Boar for its utility. It can proc freezing traps and it can also uh, deal with small minions like this Leopard Gnome that you see on the board. Um, all in all, Full Oliver has an okay hand. Uh, he has a 3 drop in that Farseer that he can play uh, to you know take off the damage provided by this Leopard Gnome. Um, and he ha now has a dragon to be able to activate this uh, Twilight Guardian, which is pretty good as well. So, looks like he's gonna go. Okay, picks up the Mortal Call, so doesn't need uh, the Stone Tusk Spore. Surrender is like smacking his head in uh, disbelief at that quote unquote top deck, even though we know that it wasn't. Yeah, this is. Uh, Surrender looks to be in quite. He he's really stressing out right now, and he actually has a reputation for that in Korea. Uh, I remember. Uh, right when he lost the season three finals of the OGM Masters, he was really distraught, and I think he like 
he started tearing up a bit because it, he was so close to back to back championships. Yeah, definitely someone who takes his game very seriously and, uh, you know, obviously goes over every single play uh, in his head when he when he uh, plays and makes sure he makes the best play and agonizes if he can't do that. Right now he's agonizing over whether he should play this Lepernum or whether he should coin the Haunted Creeper. Uh, either makes sense. Either of them obviously makes sense because uh, he th he can curve out next turn uh, using either the Eagle Horn Bow um, or using the Eagle Horn Bow with the remaining card. I think Fulver at this point he needs to make a read at what kind of hunter this is. If it's um, if it's the uh, mid range hunter, I think. Maybe Twilight Drake would be better. But instead he's going to go with a wow. completely different line. Going for the Dark Peddler, that's pretty surprising. Tournament attendee doesn't really block too much as we can... I mean, he knows on the board that there's the... Uh, um, the Glaive Zooka. But instead just going to clear off the Night Juggler here. Which, uh, I mean, two small minions on board, to his credit, does work better uh, than one in dealing with Hunter, typically. But, uh, yeah, Misha hitting the field. wonder what Surrender's going to do here. Going to start trading. Uh, imagine he... Well, what do you think? Will he hit the face with this Leper Gnome or not? Uh, I think it's going face. Um, it doesn't play around Hellfire, but I don't think you care too much at this point. Yeah. Um, are you sure there were high mains in the stack? This honestly it just looks like complete face hunter at this point. Yeah, I was going to say that Fuelover, um wasn't really, I mean, just from Fuel's perspective, he doesn't really know what this is. It looks to him like it's completely face hunter, but I'm pretty sure I saw the high mains in there, unless I'm confusing uh, his for someone else. I'm just forgetting right now, but um, I mean, just just based on the amount of trading that Surrender's doing, I feel like it look. I feel like it is uh, the the uh, mid range hunter. What do you think? Just based on his uh, amount of amount of trading that he's been doing. Right, right, that makes sense. And I wonder if Fulliver can get that from these plays. He's playing very defensively as well. Um, he, uh, The problem with this play is that I, I don't think he really has much of a plan on how to kill this Misha later on. Like, none of his minions really deal with, deal like one damage here. He gave up the Mortal Quill, he gave up Stone Test Spore. And now this is going to be really awkward going into the future turns, especially because we know there's Eagle Horn Bow to clear off this Twilight Guardian. There's the Haunted Creeper to clear off this tournament and attendee. And so Render is going to be left with a board that's very vulnerable to Hellfire, but uh, Fulliver doesn't have that. He just has all these clunky minions. Yeah, d good point you put up there, uh, not being able to deal with this Misha. Has the uh, heal bot, but uh, I mean, obviously that's going to be difficult. What do you think for uh, Surrender here? Does he go with the hero power or does he go with the mad scientist? Looks like he's hovering over the hero power, wants to kind of spread out his damage. Obviously, if he, know if he knew his next top deck, that would help him a lot. Like a top deck high main or something, he would definitely go with the mad scientist here, but uh, there's your damage, by the way. He picks up the, the uh, black ring corruptor. That's really huge draw for him to be able to clear that out. But... Um, yeah, Surrender, he needs to pick up something good here. Right. Guess the high oh. main. So now he's kind of uh, regretting not playing these, the uh, Mad Scientist last turn. But, um, yeah, I, I would consider that as pretty good, I would say. Yeah, <laughs> I think he's he's happy nonetheless. Obviously, uh, wishes he played the Mad Scientist, but I think he's still happy about it. Oliver looking toward that uh, Thoros and realizing that this isn't as aggressive a Hunter deck. Um, and he's going to need to have the utility of cheaper minions. So looking toward that Thorson potentially. And obviously that's something that potentially uh, Surrender might trade his uh, high main into if he deems it too threatening. Right. It's really actually sort of lucky for Surrender that he curved out so well early on. And he had two Lepernomes. So it really sold to Fulliver that he was playing a face deck. Whereas um, Fulliver might have been using his resources slightly inefficiently. Uh, for example, the Twilight Drake might have gone on the field if he knew for certain that this was more of a hybrid type of hunter. Um, but now it's going to be stuck in his hand for a very long time. Well, it looks oh, like he's well. finally going to play it. Uh, is able to heal as well. This is a nice use of his mana. And um, it, interesting to, it will be interesting to see if Surrender does go for the trade here uh, or if he starts going to face. Um, this Glaivezook is pretty... Uh, you know, dangerous for Surrender to use because he knows that there's two BGHs in Fuelver's deck, and we see that there's one in hand. So if it lands on the high main, it could be trouble. Yeah, I'm honestly a 
bit surprised at this play because really there's n nothing that contests this Savannah high main, really. By the right? way, um, if Welver didn't heal there, there was lethal. Mm -hmm. uh, it would have been exactly 17 damage. So Yeah, because uh, of the, the Glaive Zooka that he top decked. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, Surrender's looking at that. He knows he's 3 damage off lethal. He might just go face here. And uh, we'll see what this goes on. Hits the high main. Oh, really bad oh no. Him. And uh, Fualver has the exact mana to be able to both heal bot and BGH here. Uh, this could be pretty disastrous. Yeah, not only that, but if he goes for the BGH, then he'll be able to clear off all the beasts off the field as well. Meaning that uh, Kill Command is no longer activated. Yeah, pretty devastating for Surrender here. Let's see if Oliver does go for the kill on all of these. Probably going to be his play. I mean, I, I can't imagine anything else he would clear. Doesn't right. I mean, the Mad Sign just makes things more annoying. I think, honestly, Surrender knows that getting the Glaive Zooka uh, buff on the high main might cost him the game. Because, of course, this is Malagos Warlock, a deck that runs two BGHs as a standard. Yeah, he even saw both last game, so... Uh, Surrender holding his heart. He can't take it anymore. <laughs> and that's the worst thing that you could possibly see there. He's uh, yelling at himself in Korean, I, I assume. And, um, yeah, really painful turn to see there from Surrender. Uh, if Walver clears both of these beasts, Surrender has uh, 7 damage showing on the field, uh, plus 3 or 5, depending on if he could pick up a beast next turn. So if Oliver is going to the rope here, I mean, I think it's pretty uh, straightforward, at least from our vantage point. Just clear out these yeah. beasts to uh, make sure that uh, the kill command doesn't do anything. Now, I mean, does Oliver now have lethal from his side? Oh, quick shot. Is that? Wait, hold on. So that's 6, obviously. 6, 8, plus 5 is uh, 13. So not enough. He might need to use some of this removal. Um, okay, he's just going yeah. to cycle. Just Go for it. Um, since this is more of a hybrid hunter type of deck, maybe there's wolf riders, maybe there's arcane golems in this deck. Mm -hmm. But uh, if he doesn't get lethal here, he needs to clear something off, or else Fuelver does have lethal. And the, the thing the, is, the, the, sorry. The problem with trading here is uh, with the mad scientist is you actually might not want the mad scientist to die if. Right. Uh, like, if you know all your traps in your deck are freezing trap, because it effectively gives your opponent 8 health. Right. Um, and the other so, thing is that maybe Fuolver's drawing to one last heal bot, so it, he might want to just uh, drag this game out and hope his hero power does the work. So, yeah, he's going to go clear the uh, heal bot. Gets a high main, which is good for the future, but not the greatest right now. And... Um, yeah, so looks like he's going to extend this game a bit, hopefully, and just hope that his opponent doesn't draw uh, a heal bot in the future. Uh, it is indeed Freezing Trap. So everything kind of worked out for Surrender as best as it could have. He top decked a Savannah high main, and he um, he forced his opponent not to bounce back on a, on a, um, a heal bot, basically. So now the pressure is still on Fulver. He doesn't have any heals left against a, a hunter that is consistently going to be hero powering every single turn. And he's also not set up lethal at all. It's kind of far away still. Yeah, so the pressure's on both players here, obviously on Fulver, to finish the game as quickly as possible. And, uh, well, kind of the same thing for Surrender as well. But, um, yeah, with that that board, Fulver doesn't have lethal, but with um, the... Uh, with the top deck, could he have lethal here? So he needs 10 damage. Um, Dark Bomb, I don't think would do it either. That well, well, he doesn't pick up lethal, but that Twilight Guardian is absolutely huge. And that Twilight Drake allows it uh, to, you know, give him the taunt. But, um, wow, this game is just absolutely insane. So many decisions to be made, and I, I mean, I imagine it's going to be the Twilight Guardian Thoros in here. I don't think you can really tap. It's just uh, too much here. I guess you could use the Soul Fire to start clearing out this high main. But then you're making it, you know, you're putting your clock on your opponent uh, a bit longer as well. So it's going to be the Soul Fire on the high main, it seems like. 
Yeah, if he does that, I also expect a clear. Oh, yeah. probably one of the better ones in this card. You definitely want Thor's in. Um, so, yeah, I definitely expect to clear because now kill command is lethal. I don't really see a reason for him to clear this off without clearing off the beast here. Yeah, this is kind of bizarre. So I think a, I think some damage here from surrender could be could be game that uh, unleash will be pretty helpful um, in clearing up this board. And uh, he is out on board, so he needs to start clearing some stuff. I guess the only thing he can clear is that uh, Twilight Guardian, but um, if he does so, I mean, no lethal on the side of Wallover either. I mean, this game is just kind of insane. Right, so if Wallover didn't uh, soul fire the last turn, he would have had lethal here. Right. Does pick up the Belcher, but... though, which is pretty, you know, good for him. So we've seen one quick shot and one kill command? Um. Yeah, it sounds about right. Huh. Well, okay, this Belcher is going to be absolutely huge. Uh, I mean, other than having lethal, that's that's pretty big draw there. Oh my Wait, god! what? He doesn't what? have enough mana for it! Oh, oh my, my god. god! Oh no! Oh no! Uh, now he realizes he blundered. And he doesn't have... He needs to tap for, for Dark Bomb right now. He needs to tap for Dark Bomb right now, or else he's he's lost. Well, he can still trade. No, he can he trade into the, into the Hound, right? Oh right, right. He can trade into the hand. Okay. But but that that was certainly a mistake. Now there's way more outs. Like any weapon causes him to lose. Unleash the hounds again. Oh causes him to... no, Lothab. Uh -oh. uh, it's a little unfortunate that he doesn't get wow. punished. Yeah. Sorry for not being able to recognize that he could trade with the hound. Thank you for catching that monk. And that's going to be it. One of the craziest games for Oliver with the misplay at the end, but is able to salvage it, clearing off that hound. And uh, for Oliver is going to allow his countryman, Jayshaw, to advance to the top eight. Unfortunately, Surrender falls just short. So that's going to be our top two. It's going to be Eloise and Jayshaw, both with two and one records. Uh, Surrender falls to one and two, and for Oliver goes up to one and two so yeah uh, that was an, a crazy set of games what do you think right. about was, the end result there it, it was definitely crazy not only were the the games crazy but the reactions from both players it was definitely the most expressive um players we've seen in this final match because so much was on the line um not only surrender surrender's placement was on the line but Fulliver's pride was kind of on the line there with um i would say some misplays there at the end we see the final results. Eloise and Jay Shaw indeed go to the next, um, go to the playoffs basically. And Surrender is basically the first invited player not to make it to the playoffs. So I'm sure he's a little embarrassed, especially um, in one of the first times he's been out of his country. And he's probably the only player, um, he, he's possibly the only player out of the entire tournament that was invited and might not make it through. Yeah, uh, so pretty sad there for Surrender, unfortunately. Can't make it. Congratulations to Jay Shaw, our first qualified player to get through. As you can see on the screen there, tomorrow will be uh, Kalento, Shadowy, Chaoshen, and uh, Tom. So that's going to be a really good matchup as well. We see on the screen there the matches that will occur tomorrow. Kalento and Tom, I believe, have a bit of a history. I think they played at PAX um, and had some interesting matches there. Um, also, Chaoshen. Chaoshen is one of the best players in China. Uh, he missed out on qualifying for BlizzCon, but he kind of has a cult following there, uh, partly because he had such a good showing in the uh, the China versus America uh, championships uh, a few months back. Uh, the one the one where um, Firebat Dog VLPS, uh, who was it? It was uh, Death Star and uh, Tare they played and America was able to win in the end but Chao Shen kind of got a cult following for you know sniping down a bunch of Americans before he went down right yeah he was um, he was considered by the Americans as probably one of the best players on that Chinese team in fact uh, I think Chao Shen was he was a bit uh, overconfident and he was basically saying oh um, I can just beat all the Americans, but uh, I'll just I'll just throw away all my teammates in the beginning and then sweep at the end. <laughs> so basically, the funny thing is, uh, I was talking to Firebat and Dog, and their strategy was basically to have uh, Dog sweep everyone, 
and then lose to Chao Shen and then have Fire Bat counter Chao Shen. Yeah, ended up and it worked out. out. Yeah. Oh. Ended up working out in the end. Uh, they lost. I think China won the first round of their uh, their bout, and then America won the next couple rounds. So ended up working out for the Americans in the end. But that's a separate story. Got a little tangent there. And uh, that's going to be it for us today. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Hope you guys tune in tomorrow. Unfortunately, we don't have any interviews for you guys today because everyone, uh, or most of the people, are at the studio. Um, and uh, I think, are are you going to be here tomorrow? Or is it Keldy? Uh, Keldy's going to be here. So this is actually my last day here. Thanks for uh, having me, D2. Yeah, thanks so much for casting. I know it's uh, pretty tough for you to get up so early, you know, in the morning and a time. But uh, yeah, that was it. Was fun casting and. I don't know, I think we did an okay job. Yep. Well, I'll see you guys uh, later on. D2, do you have any final thoughts? Um, no, I think it was a really awesome uh, awesome group today. Uh, obviously, Surrender, it was heartbreaking to see him fall, but you know, cool for Eloise's fans to see her succeed as well. And uh, good to see the qualifier, Jaysha, get through. Any last thoughts for you? No, I think I'm good. I'll see you, D2. See you guys. Thanks for Tempo Storm. Thanks for Celestial for having us as well. And um, hope to be casting some more tournaments pretty soon. Yeah, good night, guys.